Okay, so I gave you this problem at the end of the last video, and I told you we were going to have to do it the same way we did the last one, which was by squaring both sides. So I'm going to take tangent of x and square it, and I'm going to take secant of x minus 1, and I'm going to square that. So this will give me tangent squared x is equal to, don't forget, we're going to have to foil that out, because that's actually two factors of secant x minus 1. So we'll have tan squared x equals secant squared x minus secant minus secant is minus 2 secant x, and then plus 1. So you'll notice I've got secant squareds and secants, but with tangent I only have tangent squareds. So I'm going to try to replace the tangent squareds with something that involves secants. Now, if you remember the version of the Pythagorean identity involving tangent squared and secant squared, great. If you don't, great, because we can get it. So I'm going to start with the one that everybody should know, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. What tangent and secant have in common is that there's a cosine in the denominator. So everything squared, I'm going to divide through by a cosine squared. Sine squared over cosine squared, that's tan squared. Cosine squared over cosine squared, that's 1. And 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. I'm going to solve this for tangent squared. So tangent squared x is secant squared x minus 1. So now I can replace this with secant squared x minus 1 equals secant squared x minus 2 secant x plus 1. This is nice. It's a quadratic and secant, but notice when I move this over to the other side, the secant squareds are going to drop out. I'm going to also move over the plus 1. But now I've got 0 is equal to negative 2 secant x plus 2. That's awesome. It's not a quadratic anymore. So I started with what looked like it was a quadratic, but the squared term actually drops out. Since this isn't quadratic, I can just isolate the trig function. So I'm going to add over, so I'll get 2 secant of x is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 2. Secant of x is equal to 1. Now often, when I'm working with secant, I find it easier, once I get to this point, to rewrite it as 1 over cosine of x equals 1. Not absolutely necessary. If you're comfortable working with secant, that's totally fine. I'm more familiar with the values of cosine. So if I write it this way, I would just multiply the cosine over to this side. If I multiply both sides by cosine, it cancels here, and I get 1 equals cosine of x. Now, if you were comfortable, again, saying, hey, that means that cosine x is 1, 2, totally fine. I'm going to recognize that that's going to be a quadrantal angle. Cosine of x is 1 at this point. And the only angle between 0 and 2 pi for which that's true would be x equals 0. Because remember, we're not including 2 pi. We'll get that with all solutions when we add a multiple of 2 pi to things. Okay, so that's my only potential answer. But I do need to check it. And when checking is a necessary step, if you don't check, even if your answer is right, you do not get full credit. Because you haven't proved that it's right. You just lucked out. You don't get credit for lucking out. Okay. So make sure if you've squared both sides, you check your answers. So I'm just going to create a table where I list the left side and the right side. And I'm going to take a look at what happens if x is equal to 0. So this would become tangent of 0, which is just 0. This would be secant of 0 minus 1. That's 1 minus 1. That's 0. So it does check. So x equals 0 is a solution. And that means that all solutions would just be 2 pi n, where n is an integer. Notice that's 0 plus 2 pi n. This is not necessary to write that I'm adding 0 to something. Okay. If n is 0, that would give me that solution. 
Okay, excellent. So, if you see two different trig functions and you can't separate them into different factors, it's probably a sign that you're going to be squaring both sides.